you may have seen my previous tutorials where I've been using these 80 Tiny 85s and 80 Tiny 13s. Recently they've come up with some new types of 80 Tinies. The biggest issue with this is that uh, they're only sold in uh, these tiny SOP packages. They don't have any of these uh, dip through hole varieties. But they do have some updated hardware features. This is the uh, Tiny 402 which comes with uh, 4 kilobytes of flash. And in this tutorial I'm also going to be using this uh, Tiny 802. But the biggest issue is uh, if you're going to be using these for your own projects and don't want to design your own circuit boards then you're going to need some breakouts. So you can actually plug it in on a breadboard. And uh, I'm going to be using two of these. These can cost the, the price to ramp up quite a bit of your project. So I would suggest getting like cheap Chinese ones like uh, these two. For this we'll also need uh, a bit of pin header and some soldering equipment obviously. You're just gonna match your pin amount to uh, the board. There we go, I'll start by soldering these ones on. I'm not sure how visible it is here but uh, a difference between these is that uh, the, the 85 usually has the round cutout on the top left corner which indicates that this is uh, physical pin 1 and the uh, 80 tiny 13 has uh, this cutout which is for the top so this is physical pin 1. However the new ones uh, don't have any cutouts. The uh, tiny 2 kilobyte one has, uh, you're probably not going to see it very well on the camera, but it does have a, a painted dot on uh, one of the corners. And the uh, 8 kilobyte longer one has uh, no painted on dot at all. But it does have a cut out slope on one of the sides, so one of the sides is sloping more, and that means it's the left side. So this would be physical pin 1. Sadly, this is the best camera setup I got right now, so it's uh, probably not going to be that visible. But it's quite easy to uh, get these soldered on. What I do is um, I turn this one so we have uh, pin 1 facing up left, and uh, then I turn the uh, microcontroller so that one is also facing the same way and then I add a little bit of solder to the top right pad then get the tweezers melt the solder and put this into place then solder the opposite end and then I might be able to get away with uh, just mashing it in like this around and then I'll do the same thing and then I need to do the same thing with the smaller board this one is actually put on its side but it has a half moon on the top and also pin 1 is uh, square and uh, but this one is twisted so this one has uh, the half circle on the top which signifies that that's the top so I'll add a little bit of solder to the first pad Make sure it's in place. Solder on the opposite one so it doesn't move anywhere. And then I should be able to do the same thing here with the. Uh, just putting it on like that. And just make sure you don't uh, short any pins to each other. If that happens, just uh, remove the solder. Like uh, what would happen there? Let some of the solder stick to the tip, otherwise you can use desoldering braid if you have that. Just put some solder on the legs. One different thing with these uh, new AT Tinies is that uh, on all of these the uh, top left pin is uh, the voltage pin and the uh, ground is on the top right. And all of them need uh, a 0 0.1 uh, microfarad decoupling capacitor. So I figure I might as well solder on uh, that immediately. It's not going to look that pretty, but at least I won't have to bother with putting it on all the breadboards on my project. So I might as well uh, put it on immediately. Now 
The next thing we're going to have to do is program an Arduino to uh, work as the programmer for these uh, 80 tinies. The first thing you'll want to do is add the board library by going into preferences and the additional boards manager and then pasting in the link that I'm going to put in the description. And then we're going to go into the boards manager and search for 80 tiny and find mega tiny core and install that. Next up, we're going to have to go to a GitHub page to get uh, an Arduino project and download it as zip. Then open that zip file and extract it to your documents slash Arduino. And I'm going to rename it. This is optional, but uh, just to find it easier. And then go back into Arduino and go to file sketchbook and uh, find uh, the uh, project there. Then make sure you have it set to Arduino and that you have your Arduino plugged in and then all you have to do is just upload the sketch to it. We're going to start with the ATtiny tiny 402 and I will be putting it so uh, it's facing upwards. And then connecting that is quite easy, but we will need uh, two additional components other than uh, the Arduino, some cables and the breadboard stuff. We'll also need a 4.7 kilo ohm uh, resistor and a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. The 4.7k resistor has to sit on the reset pin, which on uh, this AT tiny is on physical pin number 6. And through the resistor, we have to connect it up to the Arduino on uh, IO6. And then we need the uh, capacitor, which should sit with the long leg on RES or the reset pin on the Arduino, to one of the ground connectors. And finally, all we have to do is to connect the power and ground to the AT Tiny. On this version, power comes in here and ground here. And uh, that's really all the wiring you need. So let's go program it. Here I have loaded in the Blink example sketch, which you can find under File and Examples. And we're going to change the programmer to JTAG to UPDI. And then make sure that you set it to the correct board. In this case, it's the 402. Then I'm going to leave everything at the default settings and just burn the bootloader. And finally, upload the sketch. And after uploading to it, we can now plug it in and uh, it seems like the debug LED is defined on physical pin 3. So I'll just plug it in to some batteries and it runs. So let's do the same thing but with the uh, ATtiny uh, 804. For this one the voltage and ground pins are the same. The reset pin is on the third one from the bottom or physical pin 10. And the upload process here is basically the same. Just make sure you set the correct board. Then uh, upload the bootloader. And uh, then just upload your sketch. And that seems to be working too with the uh, debug LED on physical pin 5. As usual, I'll put a link in it to all the sources and everything that I used in the description. Uh, you're probably going to want to go and take a look at those because uh, things will likely change since uh, the library for running these on Arduino is fairly new. But uh, I hope this helped you and feel free to leave a comment or a like or whatever.